na 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 Mexico. Holy copyright infringement, Batman! It's a dynamic duplicate on this episode of Deja Vu. In 1966, ABC's Batman biffed, powed, and zapped his way onto U.S. television sets. Inspired by the camp appeal of the already corny Batman movie serials of the 1940s, this new series played the Dark Knight strictly for laughs. Full of vivid colors and far-out production design, it was a pop culture and pop art sensation. Batmania swept America and beyond. South of the border, prolific director Rene Cardona knew success when he saw it and decided to take this new, groovier Batman and combine him with the world of Lucha Libre, Mexican pro wrestling, which had fast become a cinematic sensation of its own. Lucha Libre is perhaps best known for its combatants' colorful masks. Never going out in public without them, these luchadores, with larger-than-life names like El Santo and the Blue Demon, took on a mystique beyond the boundaries of the ring. And by the 60s, they had become full-fledged superheroes, starring as themselves in films and serials, battling mad scientists, vampires, mummies, aliens, and more. These were quickie, low-budget affairs with lots of action, much like the cliffhangers that inspired the Batman series. This shared serial tradition may have made Lucha Batman a reasonable proposition. And there was another element. In 1962, Rene Cardona had pioneered a new kind of movie hero, the Luchadora. And after going several successful rounds with these lady wrestlers, Cardona apparently thought Batman might work even better as Batwoman. In his film of the same name, a mad scientist is murdering wrestlers and draining their pineal glands. He's using the fluid to create a superhuman fish man, a process which somehow involves combining a goldfish with a G.I. Joe action figure. Baffled, the police have called in Special Agent Batwoman to infiltrate the wrestling circuit and discover who's behind it all. And before long, she finds herself battling the Gill Man himself. Batwoman has more in common with her male counterpart than just the name. Like Bruce Wayne, she's a wealthy socialite and rigorously trained athlete. Her cape and cowl clearly emulate Adam West's, and although her primary costume is just a bikini, her wrestling uniform, designed to disguise the figure of her stuntwoman, borrows even more from the 60s caped crusader. She also has the requisite goofy gadgets, like a gun disguised as a makeup compact, and even her car bears a certain resemblance to the Batmobile. So-called mexploitation films were well known for lifting ideas from Hollywood. Universal horror classics like Dracula, Frankenstein, and The Mummy, for example, were frequent wellsprings of material, and filmmakers would even steal from each other. Batwoman screenwriter Alfredo Salazar, in particular, was notorious for recycling material. And indeed, perhaps the only real novelty in this monster versus wrestler offering, a well-tread genre by 1968, is Batwoman herself. Remarkably, though, Cardona's film wasn't the first unauthorized cinematic Batwoman. 1966 saw American filmmaker Jerry Warren's The Wild World of Batwoman. However, its particularly unique flavor of weirdness pushed it far from its model and kept it from feeling like kin to the TV series. On the other hand, Cardona's Batwoman is very much in the spirit of the show. In fact, an evil scientist and a rubber monster suit might even be a little tame by Batman 66 standards. Nor was a female doppelganger particularly outrageous. By the time Batwoman came out, the Batman TV universe had already debuted its own Batgirl. So with Cardona's lighthearted approach, the cartoonish story, action, jazzy musical score, and of course the costume design, Batwoman is every bit believable as the Caped Crusader's Latina cousin. Star Mara Monti would tangle with a different kind of bat in 1969's The Vampire Girls, another Mexican offering starring erstwhile Dracula John Carradine. But there, all the heroics were handled by popular luchador Mil Mascaras. And Monty had little to do except sit around and, uh, bat her eyelashes. Oh well. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Same bat channel.